bond we have with our pets is unique and powerful. We'll do almost anything for our pets, but have you taken the necessary steps to ensure they will survive an emergency such as a fire or earthquake? It largely depends on the emergency plans you've made in advance. And on this episode of Danger Stoppers, we'll show you how to protect your pet. In case of an emergency, we're going to need to be self-reliant because a vet just won't be available. Uh, today I have Hachiko-san, my good friend right here. So now I'm going to show you the technique that you're going to use in case your animal was choking. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check the scene, make sure that the scene is safe. Then I'm going to check the animal. I'm going to move his head and neck into a neutral position so that we can open up the airway. Now, if your animal is choking, and they're in a state of emergency, they're gonna bite you, or they're gonna wanna bite, even if they're your owner, so be aware. So we have an object that we're not able to remove from the mouth. I'm gonna get my hands, get behind the animal, and you're gonna place both hands right underneath the rib cage. The rib cage is obviously very long, so we're gonna get right underneath it, and we're gonna give five abdominal thrusts inward and upward pushing, hopefully pushing the object out. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Yes. We can come over here, see if the object's been dislodged. If not, give five back blows. One, two, three, four, five. And then just repeat. Go from five abdominal thrusts to five back blows and double check to see if the object has been removed. Back blows. So now I'm gonna show you some techniques that we're gonna use in case your pet is not breathing and no longer has a pulse. First we're gonna do is lay the dog on their right hand side. Position the head into the neutral position opening up the airway. If your dog is not breathing, check for a pulse. So you're gonna reach down to the inner thigh and press upward and it's very easy to feel the pulse. If we do not have a pulse, we're gonna to need to start CPR. So on larger dogs such as Hachi, we're gonna to need to determine where the heart is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the arm, bend it back to the rib cage, and where the arm touches the rib cage is where his heart is located. From there, I'm gonna put two hands over that area, and I'm gonna deliver five compressions and one breath. Now my, the depth of my compression will go about two inches. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. After your five compressions, you're gonna come over to the head and deliver one breath, but you have to keep the snout closed and deliver a breath directly through the nose. We deliver enough air for the chest to rise. Once we deliver a breath, we come back, we have our position, five compressions. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five. And breathe. And we continue this for about two minutes. At the end of two minutes, we reevaluate to see if the dog is breathing check for a pulse. If there's no pulse, continue CPR. On smaller animals, the technique for chest compressions is modified. Position your hands on both sides of the rib cage and deliver five compressions about an inch in depth. If you find yourself in an environmental emergency such as excessive heat, if your dog's panting heavily, uh, showing signs of weakness, just not acting right, he may be suffering from heat stroke. So we're gonna use some common household items to help cool the animal down. So any type of liquid that you have on hand, such as water, it could even be uh, ice cold coffee or Gatorade, it doesn't have to be water. Any type of cool liquid can be used. We could even use ice packs if you have them available. So with an ice pack, you'd wanna put it on the back of their head. That's one cooling measure. If you have towels available with you, lay the towel over the animal and just pour the water directly on the towel. This will cool down the animal.
and obviously you want to get them out of the sun into a cool environment. So remember, in case of an emergency, we're going to have to take care of our pets. So that means we're going to have to be trained in the proper first aid and CPR techniques for our animals. We need to have a kit in place that's for them. And we're going to need to make sure that the animals are properly identified so we can be reunited with them in case we get separated. Thank you. The Health and Safety Commission and the Office of Emergency Management want you to know there are a number of resources available online to learn more about preparing your pets for emergencies.